So right, let me introduce you Ram Haji. So Ram's got a long list of things that he does. So he's the chairman of the Africa Sports Council. He's managing director of the Equator Sports Group, co-founder and director of Equa Equator Football Club, managing director of Blueprint Uganda, and CEO of Futsal Association in Uganda. And I know that he's going to tell you a little bit about how he got involved with all of these things. So. Um, I'll hand it over to you, Ram. Off you go. Okay. My name is Ram Haji. I'm actually um, uh, very happy to be joining you guys on this masterclass, and I hope we can learn as much as we can. And I feel like uh, my role is to introduce you to a subject, to introduce you to something that you already know. It's just I'm giving you conviction that it works, and it will work for you as a graduate. Um, you have to hear people who have been in the market for probably 15 years, and... Um, it will make sense uh, as we go on. It will make sense that what I'm telling you is something I wish I did as soon as I jumped off the campus. So um, quick introduction. As she said everything, uh, Charlotte, you've been very kind from the onset when you asked me to join this program. It's really exciting to be joining young, fresh graduates who are uh, burning with desire to change the world in whichever um, sector they choose to uh, focus on. So that said, how did I get into sports and sports management? I'm a marketing professional. That's what I studied, and I run a marketing, a digital marketing company based here in Kampala. But um, the nature of the work we do, it's digital. We've had an opportunity to work with clients from, um, from so many different countries, at least 15 countries. So that's a blessing for me that I, I keep tapping into a network that I built uh, way back that is international, so I'm able to have a client in Kenya, in Rwanda, in uh, Burundi, in Nigeria, and we can still service them here in Kampala. So that said, uh, how did I get in sports management? You see, when I was still young at campus, there's always something that I, I was part of a student organization called ISEC. Probably you guys have heard about it. And uh, the same student organization that's where I met Charlotte, um, so we were working together indirectly uh, in that organization because I was heading as um, president of the chapter here in Uganda, and Charlotte was the, cha was the president of the chapter in the Netherlands. So that's how we met. We used to meet in international conferences. So in ISEC, there was a narrative that find something you're passionate about, and you never have to feel like you're going to work. And for me, it was football. It was always football for me. I didn't know how because I tried playing football. I tried playing basketball. I actually played basketball at the national uh, division in Uganda. I failed to break, break through in football, and then I focused on basketball. But moments later, I actually realized that um, my passion was uh, more in uh, uh, organizational uh, structuring and development, and that's where I focused my energies in. See, football has three layers. It's the layer that we all know being a fan or uh, being... Um, a footballer and the second level is administration where you find the, the, the people who run federations and FAs and then the business side people actually uh, own the clubs and they own the infrastructure around clubs so I'm trying to push myself to the to the third tier because that's where the business is that's it let's just dive into um, and let me just put this presentation up um, can you all see the presentation I can't, uh, I think the mics are muted. So let me see. Okay. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, we can. Okay, perfect. I'll leave that feedback from uh, someone who can uh, hear this. Anywho, uh, the presentation is about personal branding. Um, if personal branding is so good and it can elevate you in your marketplace as a thought leader, why isn't everybody keen about doing it? I would like us to start from there. If it's, if it's so good that everybody should be doing it, why are people skeptical about doing it? Now, um, as an individual, you have your own characteristics and your archetype as an individual. And sometimes you're uncomfortable putting yourself out there at the forefront and saying, hey, this is Ram Haji and this is what I do. Because for me, personal branding is, that summarizes what personal branding is about. And uh, when you're known for what you do, you cut out the air of, um, of the unknown. Like, for example, a lot of people have skill sets that are very divergent. They have skill sets that 
touch upon three or four sectors. But the question about personal branding is what do you want to be known for? Yeah. After you're done with the journey of life, what do you want people to say he was good at and he did it really well? Now, um, this is a question that I would like to pose for every one of us here. And I'll ask, I'll ask you to ask yourself what is unique about you because that is a fact of life. Every one of us is unique in their own ways. And the saddest part of life is getting to your, uh, to your deathbed and you didn't really pursue what your purpose is about. Mind you, your purpose might not necessarily be your career. So it's about trying to align what you're really passionate about, what you're really good at, and try to find an intersection of how you can contribute in this world. So this question is pertinent. I am not expecting an answer uh, right away, but I'd like you to ponder through it through this. And uh, probably I'll give you a task to write down 10 things that you're really good at. I'm really good at marketing. I'm really good at doing presentations. I'm saying these are just examples of things you probably um, will share or things that you might have. I'm really good at interpersonal skills. I can literally talk to anybody. Um, and when I say that, I also recognize the fact that there's so many people who they find that to be difficult. So you see how um, your personality, your personality archetype supports you in terms of what you're passionate about and what your purpose is about. So what is this personal branding um, thing? And um, how can we learn to leverage ourselves? Um, right now, your cardinal responsibility as um, somebody who is joining the marketplace, maybe you want to start your own business or you want to um, pursue a career that you've probably um, been thinking about. How do you leverage yourself to thrive in any of those environments? This is not limited for people who are entrepreneurs. It's not limited for people who want to be trainers and, 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 uh, and uh, facilitators for, uh, for uh, a specific sector. It's for everyone. And um, later on, I'll show you why. Um, so why personal branding? Yeah. In any sector, if you want to establish yourself as a thought leader, probably you are, and it's important you do it now. And this is something I wish I knew when I was just jumping out of campus. I wish I knew that I had the opportunity to work on my personal brand because it was simply telling the world, hey, I am good at ABC and I'd like people to engage me in that sector. So my other uh, definition of personal branding is brand reputation. Yeah, Brand reputation. Do you want to carefully manage your brand of who you are or how people perceive you or do you want to leave it to chance? That's an important question you need to ask yourself because if you do nothing, that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, earlier on around 2010, when I started my first business, um, it was a consultancy business where I actually, um, it was a network of people around the world who would contribute consultancy for clients that would get from any part of the world. That was uh, my job. My job was to find clients. And at a certain point, because we're touching up on different sectors, I felt like I was becoming um, a jack of all trades and a master of none. So I needed to focus on something that I was really passionate about and, and marketing stood out. And years later, I felt more inclined towards uh, building brands for, for organizations and, and, and companies that we are working with. And uh, that's where I focused and said, this is where I'm going to um, put my energies to learn and, uh, and be, be the best, actually. That's uh, my ambition in the space of uh, brand strategy. That's what I'm going for. That's what I'm learning every day. And I accept to be a lifelong student. And I hope you guys um, will embrace that narrative of being a lifelong student in whatever sector you want to dominate. 
now I understand the the group we have here today on this uh, present uh, this presentation, this masterclass. You come from different uh, backgrounds. You're pursuing different careers, and I want to tell you that personal branding cuts across, and uh, we will establish why. One is establishing credibility. Um, I'll explain a little bit about uh, credibility. Uh, you understand there's so many people out there who are trying to sell what they're not. And there's so many people who are falling in traps of uh, set up by such people and they've been scammed left, right, and center. You want a service, you want a product. You don't get what you're looking for because the people who are credible enough are not visible. Two, attracting opportunities to you. This is very important right now because you're out there, probably you already have a job, and how is personal branding going to help you position yourself for the role you really want within that organization that you're in right now? So it helps actually attract uh, opportunities. For me, I, um, this is practical, practical as an opportunity. I am here talking to you guys. I'm expanding my network. I'm speaking to you guys right now. And it's an opportunity I have because I was able to position myself as a brand strategist as somebody who actually speaks to the subject of personal branding. And that's how I'm here today. That is just one proof of what this is about. And uh, later, I'll actually would love to show you how you can leverage the internet as well um, and, 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 and increase your influence. Um, we're all on social media. We have platforms that we're we like some people are Facebook people, other people are Twitter people, and other Instagram people, and others want to have a presence that cuts across. I'd like to challenge you here today to uh, maintain a professional um, presence based on what you're looking for, a professional presence across such platforms in terms of the content you share. You streamline it. You could have, say, two or three subjects that you speak to. One could be leadership. Another one could be investments because you want to position yourself as an investment analyst. And uh, third, it could be, say, basketball. You are a basketball fan and um, you're passionate about such conversations and the people you engage actually know you for that. Now, why is it important to limit it there? Um, one is you're going to create confusion, yeah? You're going to create confusion in the market. You will not be known for um, what you're good at. People will actually not come to you as a thought leader when they actually need an opinion on the subject or they actually want to position an opportunity um, on your desk. So that's why it's important for you to understand why personal branding is important. Number four is expanding your professional network because when you actually identify yourself as somebody who is a brand strategist, you will have a network of brand strategists and you learn from them. Trust me, this is going to be your takeoff in terms of how you become a thought leader in your, uh, in your sector. And lastly, secure your work, career growth, because if you're focused um, on uh, a certain path, it's visible in whichever organization you're in. And um, usually such people actually get up uh, sooner than others because other people are just present. Yeah, we're here. We're happy to do this. We're happy to go to work. We're happy to contribute and to see where life takes us. And now uh, for your leaders in that organization, when they see that, uh, they will not entrust you with responsibilities that actually take you to the top uh, of the organization. I'm not saying everybody's target should be getting to the top. Um, so I'll actually share a few um, findings that I got on the internet. Um, 87 percent, uh, this is according to the business week, uh, of the recruiters have eliminated candidates based on what Google revealed about them. Now, take an instance. You've been through campus, uh, university, seven years or four years or three years, whatever years you're running, and social media. Social media, you're blasting, you're having fun, you're throwing parties and everything is on there. And you finally graduate. People want to hire you. Everything checks out. 
CV right, um, letter of interest, perfect, your grades, perfect, uh, soft skill they're looking for, perfect. When they go to your, when they Google you, what they see does not reflect the kind of person they want to hire. What do they do next? They go to the, the guy who's next on the list. Sometimes you miss out on the opportunity to actually get yourself that dream job that you worked for all your life because of not cleaning up your presence that is out there. So that's why I asked, do you want to manage your reputation or do you want to leave it to chance? When you leave it to chance, that's how they say, we're sorry we could not offer you this job and uh, we will consider you next time we have an opportunity. Anybody uh, who has been in the job market has had that statement at least once. Yeah, so when you hear that, what they're trying to sell you is uh, you're not a perfect fit. And sometimes, sometimes, like this statistic shows us, 87% of the people recruiting will have to Google your name. Now, task number two, I'd like you guys to Google yourself and look at the first five pages, what comes up there. Sometimes because of personal branding, um, like for myself, if there's any Ram Haji that comes up 20 years later or they lived in the past, I, I am doing enough to be the Ram Haji. And this is for people who actually shared uh, same first names and surnames. Uh, I, I'll be known for the work that I did in whichever space I want to try to contribute in. Uh, so that said, um, when you Google yourself, what do you see? Yeah. What do you see? Um, checklist on Googling yourself. And uh, I'll read them out to you. Are these such results what you expected? Yeah, when you Google yourself, the things you see, are, this, are, they, are those the same thing you expected? Um, number two, are you comfortable with what you're finding with your colleagues, with your clients, with your future employers, uh, knowing that specific information about you? Because sometimes is a lot um, out there that you don't want people actually, uh, it's not their business, it's, it's just your personal life and you need it uh, private, yeah? Um, does this information support your professional image as an individual that is out there? And lastly, on your checklist, is this information in line with your career goals and your vision as an individual? So when you're leveraging your personal brand, actually, our number one tool, number one tool to propel us professionally is our personal brand. It's that one ammunition, that one ammunition in your canon that not, sadly, not many people get the opportunity to activate. Imagine you have an artillery and your best ammunition out to support your professional presence. You're not activating it. At the end, you are lost because one is um, you're not able to actually show people what you stand for and then you lose on the ability to actually network with people who you should be talking to. Now, your online presence adds credibility to your CV because if I actually have, um, I'll tell you a story. This happened um, in Nigeria a couple of years back. And uh, this is similar to um, all recruiters anywhere in the world. Uh, say you have one job and you put out an ad because it's a procedure by um, the authorities that you put out an ad to recruit so that it's fair. The pool is fairly um, spread out. So for that one job, maybe you have 50 people applying. What are some of the methods you're going to use to eliminate all these other people and find that one person? And personal branding is going to be that elimination next to you when they're eliminating people. When they're eliminating people, they will say, okay, eventually if you, you're good enough and you make it to the top five, they will Google you. They're not going to Google 50 people. They will Google the top five that actually make it, the contenders to actually fill that position that they are uh, hiring for. And then when that happens, um, eventually your online presence is going to either support you or it's going to let you down. And you're competing with somebody else who is actually doing all the things under his checklist. So 
Um, one other thing I'd like to you to consider doing is to actually have a Google alert on your name. Uh, anytime something is said about your name, it doesn't matter whether it's another Ram Haji, you should know what that Ram Haji is about. It's just an alert. You just click, go to that website. What are they really talking about? Which Ram Haji are they talking about? And sometimes I have uh, alerts on on um, keywords that are centered around my uh, my line of work. If anybody mentions digital marketing, I want to know what they're talking about. If anybody mentions about sports in Africa, I want to know what they're talking about. So that's important for me. That's why I have that. And I hope you guys uh, will, will do that. Now, organizing your digital footprint. Um, I'll speak to this um, subject because it's important when you're actually building your uh, personal brand. Um, your digital footprint becomes really important. Um, not all of us want to run uh, a YouTube account uh, where you share, you share your personal experience on things you do. Uh, so just find your comfort, find your comfort. For some people, it's just LinkedIn and Twitter. For others, they'll cut across. Find something you're comfortable with because you're going to use this space to actually share what you think. Yeah, use this space to share what you think. And um, in case you feel at a certain point that um, uh, I'm telling you to have presence online and you're questioning yourself which kind of content you're going to be sharing, um, the content can be streamlined around what you're passionate about. And I said it's important to actually select one or two or three, not more, uh, because sometimes yeah, you just you don't want to be known for a um, hundred things. Sometimes people can be multi-talented, but try and streamline that to two or three things that you are really good at. So uh, a few statistics here. 92% of the companies use social media for recruiting. You want to be recruited? If 92%, these are statistics that uh, I'll, I'll share sources uh, later in the presentation, but really, if you actually look at these statistics, companies use social media for recruiting. Are you present? Do you want to be recruited for that dream job? Can they find you? If you're not present, this job is not going to, be, is not, um, going to fall on your lap. Yeah. So that said, um, it's important that you understand that you're not just present on social media but you mind your personal brand, the way you represent yourself, and it comes from the little details. How does your profile picture look like? How is your bio? How is your cover photo? Which content do you share? Which pages do you follow? What do you reshare on your page? Um, how do you organize your content? Is there intention to share the content that you share? Sometimes, yes, oh, I found this funny and I just want to repost it. I found this funny and I want to repost it. And sometimes it can be offensive. And I'll give you a practical example. For um, people who are football fans here, you remember uh, a few years ago, uh, maybe two or three, uh, Real Madrid recruited a player. I think he was coming from um, Real Sociedad. I don't remember really well. And after they actually had confined, they had confirmed the capture of this player Hours later, they said, we've terminated the contract. And the reason was, at some point, probably 10 years ago, he reshared a, a, a tweet or maybe a post on Facebook uh, of somebody who was insulting Real Madrid. Now, you could say, how am I held uh, accountable to something somebody else is sharing? At the end of it all is, what do you want? Do you want to be somebody that gets hired and then kicks out, kicked out six hours later? Or you want to be that person even when they do their search on you, you're still going to be um, um, steadfast and, uh, and, and moving forward with uh, improving your, your career and being the best at what you do. So uh, one of three employers get rejected based on something they found on their social media profile. And I've showed you a practical ex uh, example. I'll share another example um, later on. But um, this is what I believe. If you try and shy away from sharing 
what you professionally do on, on, on social media does actually negatively affect your personal brand because being present on the digital space actually adds value to your, to your presence uh, as an individual or as um, somebody who is pursuing their career. Take an example of, say, somebody who is a lawyer, you're a good lawyer, and the law firms that are hiring. And um, when they, there's an opening, you throw in your CV and uh, they check you out, everything checks out, and you see media, everything is perfect. Example number two, he's as good, his um, social media presence is not that good. Um, they're definitely going to hire the other guy, for sure. They're definitely going to hire the other guy. If you're not that, uh, if you've not been able to actually uh, clean up your online presence, so uh, another question, um, which is um, an action point, is I'm asking this as a question: uh, What private settings you currently have on your social media profile, um, and how is this important for you uh, on stuff that you share? Sometimes you can have, and, and I'm actually saying this for us to learn how best to utilize social media to serve different target audiences. Sometimes you can have content that is for a select group of people who are your friends and you share all your football jokes, but you have a privacy setting for how you share that content. Number two, do you have anything that compromises your profiles? Like the example I shared about the gentleman who was being recruited um, at Real Madrid. Number three, inactive blogs that you forgot about. Maybe five years ago, you were really passionate about skydiving as a subject and, and um, you liked all the, all the videos that are actually on, um, on the internet centered around skydiving, as an example. And um, uh, that used as a, a blog and you're trying to position yourself as somebody who is sharing that content about skydiving. Tomorrow, you're the same person who is positioning as uh, an investment analyst. And um, when somebody's checking you out, they're looking at these two uh, profiles and they're like, uh, what is he really passionate about? Maybe he doesn't know yet what he wants to be, but this is something he used to do way back. So I think it's important today is just uh, a wake up call for us to go back and Google our name to as many pages as you can go to find anything about you, something that you're uncomfortable with, find a way of dealing with it. There are actually um, uh, systems and a website on the internet that can do a check, a background check on your, uh, on your presence. Uh, and then they'll give you pointers of things you need to change. Um, one is called brandyourself.com. You can just throw in your name and they'll give you a free search of who you are and um, things that are questionable. Uh, Sites where you actually um, just leave your uh, visa card number or your uh, payment uh, card number. Uh, and it's, in a way, you are very um, exposed. You're exposed to actually people who can hack these things. So that's an important site that will actually help you. So uh, number four is that uh, you mentioned any third party websites, yeah? that could be detrimental to what you're trying to pursue. These are questions that you need to be asking yourself and it's a different experience for different people. So uh, building and defining your, your personal brand, um, sometimes we have to understand that nobody else is going to do it for us. Nobody else, not even your twin brother. Nobody's going to build your personal brand for you. Probably if you... Um, um, if you run a company, I've seen people who actually, and these are mostly people in the space of training and running, uh, and, and, and running um, internet businesses and programs, they center their companies around the personality and they hire a team of 20 people who care about your personal brand. They, they create the content, they post for you, and they engage the people who are on uh, those platforms. That could be a different, a different angle. But in your perspective, you are your number one employee to actually cater for your brand. So your presence is actually really, really important. So um, let's, let's just share something I found really interesting on the internet. 
uh, it's, it's something that happened. This is a real life story. Uh, Justin Suko, she is a uh, former head of corporate communication at Disney. Uh, she was fired en route London to Cape Town because of a tweet she did post uh, before takeoff. And um, everybody else knew she was fired. Uh, everybody else knew. And she was the only person who didn't know that she was fired. And I don't know if that was a good thing for Disney to do, but they just wanted to distance themselves from that tweet as fast as possible for people who actually study um, communications. That could be a, a measure uh, that mitigates the level of how devastating one tweet can be for a brand like Disney. They're a brand that knows what they stand for and anything that jeopardizes that they immediately cut you out. So um, moving on, action step number three um, is about starting with what you have. Uh, sometimes people might think, um, by the way, before we actually dive in this, um, who owns your personal domain? Ramhaji.com. Um, just type in your name uh, and say Robert uh, West, robertwest.com. Who owns that domain? Is it important today? Will it be important tomorrow? I've seen parents who actually book domains for their children's names. Yeah, that is, that, is, that would be a cool gift to give your kid and say, there you go, uh, when you're of age and you have something of substance to actually be sharing on such a platform. Because... That is your property. That's your property. Your name is your property. When everything is um, is gone, and your reputation is all that is left, it's your name that counts. So that was just a by the way. And we go back to um, what you start with. Social media is free, literally free. And um, why I say literally free because it is not as free in Uganda because I think we're probably the only country in the world that pays a tax to be on social media. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's funny. Um, we're the only uh, country in the world that pays a social media tax to use social media. Every day, if I log on Facebook, the government gets a cut of the money I pay. Yeah. So uh, it, it's, it's funny what you guys take for granted uh, wherever you are. But um, I think now you know that um, social media is actually a very important tool for you to build your brand. And, um, uh, and um, try to put yourself out there, uh, position yourself, network, and uh, all the benefits that come with uh, personal branding. Like I said, this uh, conversation, this session is uh, basically to, to provoke you in jumping into that space and see if this is something that works for you. And if it's something that you find to be um, in line with your career goals, you pursue it. There's so much resource on the internet. Uh, oftentimes, myself and other people, content creators, we put together videos and presentations and training courses and all the modules on the internet. We just find spaces and, in, and, and website where we put out all these contents. So it's, it's free content, really. So we put it out there so that people can find it and more and more people can actually be conscious about uh, things like personal branding. That's why today, my job today is just to make sure that all of you consider the idea of working for a brand called you, yeah? Do you have a personal email account uh, in your names that goes back to the same thing I spoke about as a domain? Um, small, small things that can be done uh, to actually put your name out there. Now, um, how do you define your personal brand? Uh, one is, um, it shows your personality. Sometimes we connect with people uh, based on personality. Yeah, it aligns and you really want to connect with this person because you just literally, you connect with these people uh, outrightly and um, it's an element of energy that's put out when actually people showcase their personality. Um, I, I probably, I was about to use a football example and I, and I felt that um, I might be knocking out a lot of people who are part of this uh, conversation today. 
But um, uh, let me just use these two personalities and because they're actually very outstanding personalities in, in the world of football, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Some people are Lionel Messi fan, literally based on his personality. It's not even about how he plays. And they'll do anything to make sure that when a conversation comes up, who is the better player of the two? They'll say Messi. Cristiano Ronaldo fans, yeah, sometimes they could have, say, biases. Maybe he played for a club they used to support, or he plays for a club that they support now. And they will base on that. But oftentimes, for things that you connect with, personality becomes key. So defining your brand is about showcasing your brand. Uh, number two is establishing your niche. Sometimes it's important to understand that things we do, the sectors we choose are so broad. And the earlier you choose, toning down to a niche supports your learning and you become somebody who is intense. I believe in the saying that says, intensity beats extensity. So focus on something. I, my profession is marketing. I chose to focus on brand strategy. There's so many things that I'm good at and I've done before in the past. I'm not going to put myself out there and say, I am good at production for TV commercials because my business literally earns um, 55, 50 to 60% of its uh, revenues from building TV commercials for brands. Uh, and that's from a production angle. So I'm not going to position myself as somebody who does production for TV commercials. Why? Because uh, the people who do it in my company, and that's not me, yeah? They're good at it, and that's why they had to do it, but that's not who I am. I'll, when I'm promoting my business, I'll promote it as a business that sits in that niche, but when I'm promoting myself, I'll promote myself as a brand strategist, and that's where my focus is going to be. So that's it. You need to position yourself as a thought leader because you have your own opinions about the work you do. Yeah, not everybody, everything you do, uh, not everything within your sector sits well with you. And those that sit well with you, you probably have one or two thoughts about how to make it better. And that's how it helps you to stand out and be present. But remember, number six, you are going to need to be consistent while you're building this brand. Today, you cannot come and say, I am a, a brand strategist. Tomorrow, I am a, a football player. The other day, I am a, a carpenter. The other day, um, you know, you're trying to position yourself as the best in that sector. And sometimes it can be really confusing. You don't want to do that. Um, and um, it's happened to me in the past. And that's why I'm warning you against that, uh, probably. Uh, then something that I find to be really important to say at this point in time is being authentic, being you, yeah? Um, I wish I could spend a minute just explaining why it's important for you to be authentic when you're promoting your personal brand. And while you're building your niche and being you, you're going to find your own tribe. You're going to find people that resonate with who you are as an individual. Remember, there are not two people the same in this world by any measure. Seven plus billion people and no two people, not even twins, can be the same in terms of their personality, their character, their gifts, their skill sets, plus their drive. And there's so much we can talk about in that perspective. But being authentic is really key. How you deliver what comes from your heart to the world and you put it out there is you, is who you are. This is your offering to the world. And then you also, number five, rather, um, I think number eight is uh, showcasing your strength, things that you do and you're comfortable doing. It doesn't matter whether you're getting paid for it or you're not getting paid for it, but it's important at this point to understand that eventually, if it's about getting paid, it normally happens. It normally happens. Yeah. So while you're building your personal brand, you allow a tribe of people because lately, on, um, the, one of the advantages of uh, promoting a business and being online and being present is about progress. People understand that you're not perfect, but they actually can recognize the journey and they say, oh, wow, 
I like how you, uh, you've done what you've done and I like what you're doing at this stage in time. And um, if you project on your own life, probably three years ago, there's been a shift. And um, yeah, there's been a shift. And it normally, uh, it does happen because as human beings, we're working upon ourselves every day to make ourselves better and uh, to project ourselves better. Yeah. So for you to be authentic, you will need to understand that you're going to actually have to create your own value proposition. All of us have heard what value proposition is about, yeah? This is who you are, identifying with who you are, what makes you, what makes you very distinct from the rest of the people in this, in this room. The people who are seated in this masterclass, whoop, I will need to plug my computer before this presentation runs out. So excuse me for doing this late. And I'll tell you why. I was telling Charlotte um, a few minutes before you guys joined. Um, normally here in Uganda we have um, at least in the city we have stable supply of power uh, and today of all days we didn't have power the whole day and uh, with that uh, the Wi-Fi that I use for the presentation was off so it literally came back one minute before <laughs> this uh, presentation started uh, I was telling uh, Charlotte how Murphy's Law striked, uh, but yeah, we're here now, so I charged enough so that in case power did not come back, I think at this point is uh, where the presentation was going to be cut off. So um, moving on, uh, value proposition, uh, what is distinct about you, what um, makes you stand out from the rest, wherever you'll be, you all be you. So um, Find that something that makes you unique. Remember I told you to come up with a list of things that you do best. Also try and look at it from a perspective of value proposition. What are my gifts? What are my gifts that I have and I have seen? And sometimes you have to be really observant. Some, some, people, uh, some people really will not, uh, uh, will not understand uh, when we speak about uh, your gifts, uh, but you have to be really observant of who you are as a person, how you behave around strangers, how you behave around people you know, around family, around your employees. There's small things that you do. They might not necessarily be in line with your career, but these are your gifts. And trying to find how you leverage that becomes your value proposition. Um, what makes you get out of bed in the morning? Yeah. What skills you bring to the table? and um, it make, they make sense. Yeah, so this is a journey about daring yourself. However frightening it is, it's frightening to put yourself out there and say, hey, I am an expert in financial analysis or I'm an expert in data analysis or I'm an expert in, in, in law or maybe civil law, yeah? Because sometimes you feel you're going to be attacked from a point of capacity. Are you really good enough for you to put yourself out there? But once you make that brave decision to put yourself out there, it comes with the responsibility to be the best. So this is, this is actually a very good trap. It will actually trap you in a moment of constant learning, and uh, you will always try to improve uh, and, uh, and be the best. There is um, so much we can talk about in terms of uh, personal branding. Um, I prepared a presentation. I probably will fast pace through a couple of things that might be important. Um, so that we spare time for Q&A. So updating your CV to reflect your brand. Yeah, have your own personality, have your own style onto your CV. It doesn't matter um, which company you're applying for. They want to see that uniqueness. If somebody says, submit your CV and you send a social CV or web-based CV or a video CV, uh, they'll be really uh, intrigued and um, they'll be happy that you're able to share your personality through your application process. And I'm hoping that some of you who are actually applying for jobs right now, you should be able to showcase your personality. Don't be afraid to uh, showcase who you are as an individual. Sometimes you'd be the person they're looking for. Imagine two people going into a boardroom, they're all looking for the same job, same position to be filled, and you're offering exactly the same everything checks out it's a tie and the human resource manager plus the selection committee 
they're scratching their heads on who to select. But maybe according to their company culture, they needed somebody who is very lively. He oozes joy in the boardroom. He uses joy uh, on the floor when, when you're working. And that's exactly what your personality is about. Oftentimes, they're going to hire you because you're feeling a need that's not related to what you studied. It's not related to your career. It's not related to um, what they're hiring for, but it's actually the person they're looking for. So um, networking to build a brand is key. Find pockets. Even when you're under lockdown, there's still a lot to network on. Yeah, there are conversations on the internet, like the one we have right now. You can network with people. I'm pretty sure um, of the people who joined this masterclass today, probably you might know one or two. It's also important to know who else is in this masterclass and how can we connect, how can we leverage each other, how can we support each other on our journeys of being the best in our sector. So I'd like to conclude this presentation by, um, uh, by saying that uh, my job today was literally not to um, teach you about what personal branding is about. My job was today interest you in working for yourself, working on your brand, trying to be conscious, trying to be intentional about your reputation. And no one will find offense in you trying to guide your reputation in a certain direction uh, if that's what's best for you. So aligning your values and your behaviors with strategy, culture, and um, and the brand that you're trying to produce, that's when you actually get your tribe. They get to follow you. They get to be with you. They get to be a part of your journey. And um, I put up this on the side, strategy, you, and your brand. And um, the result that you're looking for is yourself, your driving strategy based on your, your leadership skills, and the execution point is what takes your brand out. You could say, I want to have a digital presence. That's execution, you know, towards building your brand. I want to build my website. I want to build my personal website. Um, your behavior also contributes to your brand. Some people are just humble, and humble people like humble people. Some people are just cocky, and it's okay, because mm, which example should I say? Um... Richard Branson, Richard Branson, um, he's, um, how do you build around a very peculiar brand like that? He has a following. People actually want to follow him, yeah? Even when he has a very, uh, and, and I say this for a fact, uh, I find his personal to be very, very interesting, very intriguing, very peculiar. But you don't have to be somebody else to actually promote your brand. So even if you had a personality that's, Peculiar, you can still try and build around that specific personality because this is who you are. We're not trying to put everybody in the same box. We're just saying, um, be you, be uh, do you, be authentic while doing it. And uh, I'd like to say thank you for uh, being very attentive. And um, at this point in time, I'd like to engage questions. There are so many frequently asked questions in the space of uh, personal branding. I'd like to open it to everybody else. Just unmute your mic. And I don't know how the procedure is. Probably will be guided by Roshan and, uh, and uh, Charlotte. But yeah, it's open for questions right now. I'm happy to engage and uh, answer as many questions as I can. But also try to remind you that I'm available to actually answer to uh, any questions that you might have. If I mentioned something that resonated with you and you'd like to follow it up, my name is Ram Haji. It's the same name I use on any social media platform, whichever you're comfortable with. Because of the line of work I do of digital marketing, you will find me on any social media platform, be it TikTok or uh, Snapchat. Yeah, I have to be advising my clients on uh, where their presence has to be. So I am present on literally every social media platform uh, for convenience of learning uh, what I'm offering to my clients. Because sometimes we have conversations like this with my clients and they're like, is TikTok really going to be something that we should be considering. And I have to be on TikTok to actually understand that myself before I can advise my clients. So that said, thank you. I'm happy to engage with many of you. And uh, special mention, I think one, one of the 
individual in this masterclass we already connected on uh, LinkedIn and that's brilliant just inbox me and then in case there's any question and also I'd like to support I'd like to support on somebody who is actually starting out on this journey of personal branding and you want to know the the one on one about personal branding I'm available and um, I'm happy to support so thank you for listening so let's dive into the question shall we Great, thank you, thank you so much, Ram, and thank you, thank you to um, you know to be offering out um, this this generous offer of of connecting and asking other questions that we you know won't have time for uh, today. Um, so let me just um, quickly jump into one of the questions. Jennifer Salem, can you ask your question, please? Hi, Ram. Thank you for a really interesting presentation. Um, my question is not related in such to personal branding, but it's more about your work. Um, so I was wondering what has been the cultural challenge as president of the African Sports Council in managing the five development regions, so the North, West, South, East and Central Africa? Yeah. I like this question already. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Africa is a very unique continent with people. Uh, we're, diverse, we're diverse. We're the same people, but we're very diverse in terms of culture. And I'll tell you this: uh, I used to think we're the same because we all we all look alike. And people who are not from this continent, when they see us, they think, hey, "Yes." At some t some point, I knew people who would use the same passport and they would not be detected at the airport. But to me, they look so different. So I was in Botswana, and I was experiencing winter. We never experienced winter in Uganda. And I'm like, and even our culture, uh, that was way, way back in 2000 and, uh, 2006, and I've gone to do an Isaac internship. And just experiencing living that life every day with people who look like me, speak like me, but with different, different, different cultures was very, very unique. But I actually have to understand, um, because of my interpersonal skills that I've tried to learn over time, I try to connect with people from their point of comfort, okay? Their point of comfort. When I connect with them, I want to know what are their pain points. For example, at Africa Sports Council, um, in South Africa, it's not more about infrastructure development for sports development. It's more about advocacy for policies that support sports. So when I understand that, I understand their pain points and I engage them from that perspective. And uh, it's helped us create the right partnerships and also connect with the right people to support this vision because sometimes you have to recognize the fact that it takes, it takes a lot of work and a lot of people. So yeah, your personality, sometimes you need to know that it might not get you what you're looking for. So you, you're going to turn, out, turn down on your personality. Some people are, are very um, strong-headed. And uh, if you're a strong-headed person, you are probably going to clash. So tone it down for the sake of that one meeting and get what you're looking for and then move on. You've signed a partnership for the Africa Sports Council and you walked out of that boardroom with a signature. So that's what you're looking for. I hope that answers your question, but if it doesn't, please follow up with me as well. I'd like to explore more. Thank you. Yeah. Great, thanks, Ram. Um, Christopher Unsworth, can you ask your question, please? Can you unmute your microphone? Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, sorry, un unmute to begin with. Um, yeah, so thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, my question was, Pleasure. obviously, you seem to have a lot of things going on and have a lot of position. So how do you go yeah. about sort of managing your time and make sure you're using that most effectively? Yeah. Yes, very important. Um, as an, probably you are thinking of becoming an entrepreneur by asking that question, I already see that direction. Um, sometimes it's about how you build your teams and how you, um, I learned earlier on that you cannot delegate what you cannot do. So um, if I'm going to delegate somebody to lead, I need to know how to lead. So that at some points when, uh, for example, at the uh, Equator Sports Group, we run a talent management company, we run a football club, we run a football club, uh, we run a news company, uh, as well as, um, what am I forgetting? Okay, that's it. So just one company, <laughs> we're doing four or five things. So there's got to be a team leader who actually even understands that small facet 
much deeper than I do and I actually connect with him to support him live his experience of leading that specific aspect. And I try to spare my time for each because I know the core work has been taken care of and where I come in, I actually focus most of my energies on the Africa Sports Council. And many of these, they're just businesses. We run them, we sit in boardrooms, we have our deliverables, and we just check in with everyone and see, do every, uh, does everyone have what they need to deliver? So I pre I'm pretty much, that's it. Thank you. Ram, you make it sound so simple. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure okay. it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not that simple. Hey, Fiona, I like your background. You're very strategic at doing this for this presentation. <laughs> um, Mara Ongwe, would you like to ask your question, please? Yeah. And just unmute yourself, Mara. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, thank you for the session today. That was really productive and I really learned a lot. My question was in line with um, trying to figure out what to do because I feel like as graduate as, as graduates, we have a lot of things that we're interested in and we're trying to find out what exactly we want to focus on. So what tips do you have to, for us to be able to find out what we want to focus on so that we can better brand ourselves? Yeah, I like that question a lot. A lot of people make a mistake here. This is the stage to make mistake, which is okay. You can make mistakes because you can rectify them. You have that time on your hands. But if you want to have the right footing in the right direction, it helps even better. Now, this is the mistake you're going to do. Sometimes, because you know somebody, you get hired for a certain role. And oftentimes, this becomes your career because you're hired in that space. Take an example. You're probably an engineer, but um, as you're waiting to be hired, maybe you speak to someone and they connect you to a job that you can do as a, a data analyst. You don't want to wake up 30 years later as a data analyst. Yeah? It just doesn't sit well with me because that was your first job. That's going to become your, your goal, your career. So it's important to focus when you get your job to understand how does it align with who I am and um, what I want to do. Now, like I said, write a list of 10 things that you're really good at and look through which ones of those align with what my skill sets are. Passion, skill sets. So when you match them, look for organizations that are actually recruiting people who have these skill sets and this uh, passion. So that actually already shows you where you should be contributing towards. And um, take note, have a notebook on you. Every time you come across something that really touches your heart, write it down, write it down. Most likely that's not very far away from what your purpose is. Something that really touches your heart, it could be a baby. You're probably, probably uh, designed to be taking care of babies and that's what your purpose, <laughs> your purpose is in life. And the uh, people have thrived building businesses by taking care of babies in one way or the other. You could be making products for, that serve that market because this is what, what you are. Sometimes it doesn't have to be really sophisticated. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Asante. Great, okay. Ram, can we, can we squeeze uh, a few more questions in from the chat? Um, I know we're at yeah. uh, at seven o'clock now, but Rosha, have we yeah. got some questions on the chat? Yes, we have. Uh, Liana, do you want to ask your question about the labour market and becoming more competitive? Sure. Hi, Ron. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. I found it really interesting and insightful. So my question is: I know over the time of the master classes, a lot of um, a lot of people have said how important it is that you have your own character and personality and that's the main thing that's going to sell you um, but I'm sure I feel like now more people are aware of this it's going to be even harder because everyone's personality is going to come through um, so personality put aside in qualifications um, what other things do you think people could do to ensure that they stand out other than things like volunteering and qualifications and things like Thank you, it's a beautiful question. Um, quick answer is um, what else can you do? There's always so much to do. Personality, yes, is important. And I'm glad a lot of people have been mentioning it to you guys. Um, and uh, it's also important for me to re-echo that same conversation. What else can be done? Um, to be the best, to be a thought leader, you have to understand that it takes effort every day takes effort every day. So focus on what you're going to learn 
towards at a certain point uh for example i um so many years ago uh my first job i got recruited as a sales uh, a salesperson for uh, a newspaper company so all we did was sell advertisement space in the papers and i focused on being the best salesperson looking for the videos presentations attend trainings and stuff like that within no time i was hired as a sales and marketing manager in a company for a 22 year old in a company that has employees who have been working in the same space for 20 years what stood out is they saw the passion of how much i wanted to learn and be better number two also uh, what you give uh, you you get back i was supporting my colleagues i used to run trainings every morning for the sales team yeah, some extra support you can give to your colleagues to be better as an organization uh, helps to uh, actually position you as an individual. But if I had to just mention one thing, what else you can add onto your personality is to just don't be average in the line of work you choose to be. Just try and be the best. You most certainly will. You most certainly will try as much as possible to learn all the details so that you ooze information. You should be the encyclopedia of the sector. If, if, you, if, you, if your niche is going to be data analysis and people want to know the latest system in data analysis, they know who to call. And that's where you know your value in the organization. When they're trimming down on um, so uh, when hello yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Sorry, that was the call that was coming through. I couldn't avoid it. Uh, when they're trimming down on um, on uh, people, and um, your name is uh, one of them, most certainly you will stay because they already see the value you're giving more. Try and be that guy who gives more than what they're paying for, more value than what they're paying for. Trust me, you will always stand out. You will always climb that ladder. If you you're the guy who gives value all the time value 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 to your organization any space you can contribute anything in the office you can uh, offer you extra time to volunteer on whatever initiatives that improve the mood in your workspace and you're contributing in that space people would love that and i hope liana that answers your question it does thank you okay. thanks Ram. um we just have one more question um from mohammed do you want to ask your question But hi, Ron, thank you so much uh, for your talk. So my question was, um, is there anything that you can do beyond uh, LinkedIn to improve your online presence? Are there any other platforms that you can possibly use? Yes, um, yeah, LinkedIn is certainly not the only one. Um, the big five social media platforms are important. The big five, I mean, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and, uh, and uh, Instagram, uh, you know them. Maintaining a uniform presence for me, some people do not find the need to be a cross board, but it's simple. Like um, the content that I share on my personal social media platforms, when I have a content calendar for content that I share in a month, it's just not something that is random that just out of, jumps out of the blue. I know you're looking for platform, but what do you do on the platform? Content. Yeah, so I'll say, from the line of work that I do, I like to share a post per week about personal branding. I like to share a post about uh, organizational development because these are the spaces I've chosen to, to contribute towards. So I have a content calendar where I say on a Monday, this is what I will share. So if somebody works on the artwork and I put together the content and I just resize it to different social media platforms that I'm present on. So it's the same content that I'm going to share it. Maybe Twitch a bit in language because you understand that Twitter People consume content differently, more in form of news. So you can twitch up the same content to fit that platform. And But I will advise if um, uh, you take my advice, Mohammed, um, you'd have a presence across, have a presence across because um, well, it's uh, a digital for you have a look at how Instagram works these days, it's a lot different from yeah, what you portray Instagram, yourself on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, on Instagram, still you can maintain a professional, um, a professional outlook because you're out there to showcase what you do and what you, you want to put out there as content. 
Yeah, so it's up to you what you use your, your Instagram for and as opposed to what Instagram is about, yeah? So don't be trapped in understanding and in saying, oh, TikTok is for teenagers. No, what do you use it for? Yeah, it's about what you use it for. So uh, that should be the, the mindset. But I, I think LinkedIn is great, but there are other platforms that you can maintain a presence. And uh, Facebook becomes very key later on as, um, let me tell you something. Some people think that uh, you have to be a celebrity, a public figure to have a following. No, that's not true. As an individual, your network of friends, they care about what you share and they want to follow it and they want to, to comment on it and they want to, to engage with you. So it does not make you a celebrity. Sometimes people feel like by putting yourself out there to promote your brand. Just in a second. Exactly. To promote your brand. Uh, they feel like I'm putting, out, uh, I'm putting myself out there to create a public profile, a, a public figure kind of profile. No, that's not the essence. The essence is not being famous. The essence is being uh, somebody who consciously contributes in your space. Sometimes that's one of, it depends on how you see it, it's one of the, um, what do you call it? It's one of the side effects of uh, personal branding. And that's what people fear. They want to live a private life, but they fear if they put themselves out there, it's going to make them public figures of sorts. And uh, the challenge that come with public figures, people get in your business, they start um, pushing their nose in, uh, in, in matters that they, they shouldn't be doing. So. Sometimes this is a fear about um, social media, but have a, a professional presence, know how to work with the, with the privacy settings for each uh, social media platform. You'll be good. Just learn how it's done. It's pretty easy, I'll say. It's pretty easy. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Right. Thank you so much, Ram, for being so generous with your time. Um, I think uh, we're, we're going to close it now. And uh, thanks, everyone, for your great questions, for your attentiveness. Um,